Welcome to another training video by H Impact. My name is Travis L. Hope, Senior Software Engineer here at H Impact. Today we will be looking at a Blazor server-side implementation with a SQL Server database using the Chart.js JavaScript library. Let's get started. Here we have a Blazor server-side solution named Blazor Chart JS. On the home page, we have the chart type dropdown, we have the color type dropdown, and we have a bar chart. The bar chart represents populations by city. On the y-axis, we have the population values, and on the x-axis, we have the city labels. To see the actual values for the cities, we just hover over each bar. Now, let's look at the rest of the chart types. Horizontal bar. Pie chart. With the pie chart, we can actually remove pieces of the pie by clicking the legend corresponding to the city. And add them back by clicking them again. The line chart, which the dots represent the population for the city. The donut, which is identical to the pie chart, except for the hole in the middle. It also allows for you to remove sections corresponding to the city. And add them back by clicking them again. The radar, which is similar to the line chart, with the dots representing the city population. And the polar area, which is a hybrid between the pie chart and the radar. Now, let's go back to the bar chart. Great. Now, let's also take a look at what happens when we change the color type to RGBA colors. As you can see, the RGBA colors are transparent. We can now see the grid behind the bars. Let's look at the rest of the charts with RGBA selected. Horizontal bar, pie chart, line chart, donut, radar, and polar area. Great. Now, let's get back to the bar chart. Okay, everything looks great, but there looks like there is a spelling error in one of the city names. Fairville is spelled with two T's, not one. Also, the value for population for Fairville shouldn't be in the 50,000s. It should definitely be in the 200,000s. So let's correct that. Click the city population link. Okay. The city population provides a list of all the cities, as well as their corresponding population and their corresponding colors, X or RGBA. There's also two buttons that allow you to delete or edit each city. And there's a button up top that allows you to add new cities. There's another way of adding cities by filling out this row at the bottom and clicking Save. Below, we see the chart that was on the home page once again. And Fayetteville is still misspelled, and the value is still too low. 
To fix this, let's click Edit on the Fayetteville Row. Now, this form appears, which will allow us to update the city. Here's where we need to add the extra T in Fayetteville. And here's where we need to increase the value to 207,996. Nice. The hex color is listed here, so if we wanted to change it, we could. This color picker will allow us to change the hex color. The hex color that we have is just fine, but let's change the value for opacity to adjust the RGBA color. Instead of being at 1, which is 100%, let's change it to 0.4. Nice. Okay, 0.4 now is the opacity. And now the RGBA color has been updated. Now let's click Update to save our changes. The record was saved successfully. Excellent. Now let's go back to the list. Okay. Fayetteville now has two T's. And the opacity value in the RGBA color is set to 0.4. And if we look at the chart below, if it was spelled correctly, and now its RGBA color has an opacity that allows us to see through it. That takes care of editing a row, but what about adding a new row? There's two different ways to do it. We can click Add, and fill out the same form which we used to edit, or we can actually use this row here at the bottom and add it directly inside the list. Let's add a new city here. Let's type carry. And let's add the population of 170,282. Let's give it a hex color in the gold range and finally let's update its opacity to 0.4 and hit save okay great carry looks like it was added successfully it has a new ID of 8 the name carry the value 17282 and the hex color is that gold color and our opacity now in the RGBA space is 0.4. Now that we've added the city, let's look at the chart and see how it was affected. Harry has been added to the end of the chart and with the proper value 170,282. Now, let's delete a row. Let's delete carry since we just added it. We get a confirmation message saying, the record for carry was deleted successfully. Now, if we return back to our chart, now carry has been removed from our chart. Let's go back to our home page to make sure everything still looks good on that chart. Nice. Looks like Fayetteville was definitely corrected with its spelling. Its value is now in the 200 thousands instead of 50 thousands. And there is no carry referenced as far as population for this chart. Let's take a look at the project behind this application. And then let's look at the database behind the project. Okay, here's the index page. Here is an implementation of a component called City Chart. The City Chart component is the same component that we saw on the home page and the page in which we were changing data. The implementation is this one line with either the is admin mode turned on or turned off. For the index page, we had the is admin mode turned 
to false because we didn't need to update the data. We were just looking at the data, looking at the charts. But for the city list, page, we actually needed to update the data. So the is admin property is set to true. Also, there was another component that was used, and that's the city edit component. The city edit component is a component by itself. It contained the form in which allowed us to do the edit for Fayetteville and the opacity change. It was a standalone component separate from the city chart. But it allowed us, upon clicking edit or the add button up top, to review the city and update or insert any data that drove the city chart. We also have a site.js file, which essentially uses a lot of the chart.js JavaScript library commands. This site.js file allows us to navigate and toggle between the multiple types of charts. And finally, in order for this application to work, we need to have access to a database. The database being used is a SQL Server database. In the startup.cs file, we create a reference to the SQL Server database. Then we use a service that we create inside this project to do all the create, read, update, and delete actions inside of this application. Now let's look at the actual database. The connection string is referenced by chart.js demo in the application. Here's what the database looks like inside of SQL Server. Here we have a database inside a SQL Server named chart.js demo. It has one table in the database called DBO Cities. DBO Cities, of course, has all the rows from the data in which we were looking at inside the application. You can see here that upon pulling back all the records from the city database, we have the corrected spelling from Fayetteville as well as an opacity of 0.4 that allows for transparencies using the RGBA color type. That's all of it. Again, my name is Travis L. Holt. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this training video by himpact.com.